executive, regional executives, and all executives here present. Comrades Nime, Name, comrades present, members of the media, all protocols observed. There was a conspiracy that led me to actually stand here today to speak. Um, I will not say very much because those who have spoken before me have spoken great words and many truths. And I think it's important that we remember that 40 years after the June 4th uprising, it is a day of somber reflection because the conditions that led to the uprising are never far out of sight. And until we reach a point where those conditions that led to the June 4th uprising are no more present, we always stand the risk of repeating history. Ladies and gentlemen, as a member of parliament, I stand here on behalf of the leadership of parliament to also wish a happy anniversary and not just to, um, to honor the memory of those whose lives were lost, but also to celebrate our presence here. I'm in Parliament today. We have a fourth republic today because the PNDC made it possible. And the PNDC was born out of the June 4th and 31st December. The blood that was shed on the fall, uh, following the 4th of June uprising must be a constant reminder of the ultimate price that others paid for values and principles to be restored. And it's not something we must celebrate. It is something that must serve as something on our consciences so that we do not lead ourselves into that situation where something of that nature can happen again. The years that we have enjoyed of stable constitutional rule are not by accident. The constitution of Ghana was drawn up by ordinary members of this country who came together and decided what was going to be their version of the Ten Commandments. In the Bible, the Israelites traveled the wilderness for 40 years. In those 40 years, they complained. Why did Moses take them out? They had food when they were in Egypt. Did they ask to be taken out? They complain, why is it that we are getting this manna? It's so boring. We want meat. They ask why they were being brought away from that. The journey away from repression to your true liberation is not an easy journey. And there will be times when it will be difficult. There will be times when our leaders will have to shoulder the burden of responsibility and be brave enough for the rest of us. That is what leadership is supposed to do. And so if we find ourselves here today, in a country that has moved away from principles that we once held dear, that led a lot of people to sacrifice their lives. We are walking on treacherous path right now and we must remind ourselves of those values and bring ourselves back onto the straight and narrow because the promised land was only made possible when the people remembered who they truly were. They were given the Ten Commandments, that is our constitution to guide them as to what was right and proper for them to do. As we sit here, we have a, a parliament that passes the laws that are meant for the country. The enforcement of the laws is important, but as individuals, we must remember that no collective stands in isolation. Ghana is not Ghana without the people of Ghana. And therefore, the principles that we hold dear, we must not hold in abstract and say, these are the principles of June 4th. What are our principles as the people of Ghana? As individuals, when we wake up every morning, what are the things that drive us, that make us want to be a part of what we call Ghana today? How can we make sure that the blood that was shed before, that the sacrifices that people made was not for nothing? It is by being true to those principles, the principles that do not die, the principles that make a country great. Countries all over the world look back on their revolution days, whether it is the French or the Americans, and blood was shed. Let us not sit here in Ghana and pretend like those things did not happen. Those things happened so we can be where we are today. And it is not to celebrate death or bloodshed, but to remind ourselves of what happens when you push human spirit to a certain point, that point of a dignity that makes people become what they did not know they could become. If we look just around the corner, we see what happened in Liberia, we see what happened in Rwanda. They never thought they would end up where they did, but they did. Let us take lessons from that, that by God's grace and by the, the magnanimity of those who came before us, we never had to experience what Liberia went through. 
and may it never be so. Let us kindly live by those principles. Every day, every time we go to church, to the mosques, when we pour libation, when we pray, and we pray, let us not be only for the prayers that we pray to God, but also to remember how do we live up to those principles in our daily lives. Because that is the only way we can make sure that Ghana moves forward in a sustainable way. That we don't have people who are living below the poverty line who can then be deceived by those who have money when it comes to time to vote. People must have a dignified experience of life. They must be able to support themselves so that if somebody comes to them and says, if, you pay, if I pay you vote for me, they will look at the person and say, I have my own money. I will vote for you if you represent what I believe in. We now have an opportunity to vote every four years. Let us vote on things that we know are possible. We are discerning. We know what is true and what is not. Let us be guided by those principles in our choices of members of assembly, of members of parliament, of the executive. Let us not think that it is just four years and it will pass. A lot can happen in four years. So every time we go to vote for people, let us remember these are the people we are giving the authority to do what they are meant to do on our behalf. Let's make sure our leaders are accountable. There is no such thing as our buying. We are the ones who put everybody in office and they must be accountable to us. And if they are not doing what we have asked them to do, we must ask them to give account and they must do the proper thing. Comrades, this is a day that, like our deputy youth organizer said, we must use it to do that important soul searching and to start anew. There's a saying that life begins at 40. Perhaps we should look at this as an opportunity to restore what we believed in once upon a time and make sure that the younger generation knows where we came from. When we look at our tradition, and we have people who are elders in our traditions always telling the story of where their people came from, it is so that the generations ahead do not forget the history, do not forget where we came from. And yes, our history is not always something pleasant, and it is not always something that makes us rejoice, but it is our history, and we must not run away from the reality of where we came from in order to make sure that we build a strong path towards where we want to be because the future is only secured when we are honest about where we've come from and where we are today and that way we build together and we move forward as one nation and one country god bless you all thank you